Before I began to replace a wristwatch battery by myself, I used to visit a small mom and pop clock shop. It was diffidently situated in the nook of a supermarket. Although the supermarket had fairly many shoppers around, they just walked past the clock shop and seldom got in. The shop looked near deserted and I often saw an old couple who kept the shop nodding off over the counter. The old man was a typical bullheaded craftsman. He never pitched or chatted friendly to the customer, but worked on a watch intensely and precisely. All his tools looked as old as he himself was, having use for who knew how many years. Every watch of mine I brought there was a cheap one, and yet he treated them as if they were high-end watches. One of my wristwatches has a peculiar shaped lid and when I brought it in for a battery change, he closed the lid with his own hands by taking 10 minutes since his tool was too old to deal with the shape. When I brought in an apparently broken wristwatch, he poured a mysterious liquid inside the watch and dried it with the ceiling light by standing on the chair to reach up the light for 10 minutes. The watch started ticking again magically and has been in top shape since then. I had never left the counter during his work because I liked to look at it so much. Everything he was doing to a watch attracted me immensely. I would even gaze at a simple battery change with fascination. He would use a wearable loop, clean the lid with a tiny brush, open it, take out an old battery with tweezers, bring a new one from behind the curtain, engrave the date on the battery so that he could evaluate its duration on the next change, put it in, close the lid with his old tool and set the time with his wristwatch. Sometimes he found a tattered water repellent rubber ring inside my watch but he never pressed me into buying a new one. He just picked up torn pieces with his tweezers and put them back in as they had been. His most strict instruction to keep watches was to separate them from appliances at least 10 feet. It's difficult in my small apartment but I still keep my watches as far from appliances as possible. He also told me repeatedly not to place a watch close to a cell phone. I've changed my wrist to wear a watch to my right as I use a cell phone with my left hand. Eventually I moved too far away from the shop and couldn't visit anymore. And I started replacing a battery by myself. I mimic his battery change with much more primitive tools. Probably I like to see his work because of his passion and earnestness for a watch. I wonder how he's doing and miss him. Audiobook Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total. I don't have a child and probably won't have one all my life. But in my dreams, I've cuddled my baby for several times. It's a boy and always the same baby, and I firmly believe I have a child in a different dimension. One day, in my dream, or in that dimension, I saw him in his 20s. It was the future. He lived in a secluded village and was devoted to an unfamiliar future sport. He didn't notice me as I was watching him from somewhere far. I was so happy to see my baby have grown up and see him not working at an office as a businessman. An elderly man passed by me and I asked him about the sport my son was practicing intently. My question was if the sport was some kind of official, recognized, or popular, which was somehow a possible way to make money. He told me that this sport was completely unknown to the public and there was no event or competition, thus it never brought money whatsoever, not a cent. I burst into tears for joy. Not only he didn't become an office worker for a steady income, but also he chose the profession that was totally unrelated to money or fame. He wasn't interested in them. His only interest was the sport. I couldn't stop crying for joy, thinking how ideally he had grown up and what a perfect son he was to me. I felt thoroughly proud of him and grateful for him to become as he was. Since I saw that dream, I felt more confident of myself because I've raised an honorable child in the other dimension. Audiobook, Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total. Audiobook, The Family in Kyoto, One Japanese Girl Got Freedom by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple Books, Google Play, Audible, 43 available distributors in total.
Audiobook, Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total. ご視聴ありがとうございました。